let's take a close look at the retina. The retina, if we refer back to this drawing, is the inner layer. It's primarily in the posterior parts of the eyeball, and it captures light rays. So that retina has a number of different neurons, most importantly the photoreceptor layer, which consists of neurons known as rods and cones. But I want you to first look at this drawing again and imagine light rays are entering the eye and hitting this part of your retina. This part of your retina is going to be largely peripheral vision as central vision is done right at the back of the eye. When light rays are heading towards this region of the retina, they go through different layers before hitting the photoreceptor layer. So notice light would be entering, in essence, this way into the retina. Those light rays have to travel through neuron layers to get to the photoreceptors. The neuron layers I want you to look at would be the ganglion cells. So these are known as ganglion cells. Light travels through them through another layer of different neurons, primarily the bipolar cells. Then it hits rods and cones, the photoreceptors. So light travels this way through the retina. Those, those light rays get captured, transferred into action potentials, and then transmitted back out this way, eventually leading to the ganglion cells that transmit those nerve impulses along the optic nerve. So light goes through a couple layers of neurons, gets captured, converted into action potentials, transmitted back out, eventually the optic nerve. There's another layer in the deepest part of the retina known as the pigmented layer. These are not neurons, but instead they help to absorb any scattered light and they support and protect the photoreceptor cells. So as a review, we have rods and cones, which are known as your photoreceptors. The rods are most useful during low levels of light. So for example, at nighttime, they're important for our night vision. They help us distinguish shapes and shades of black and gray. Rods require vitamin A. You've probably heard the fact that vitamin A is good for your eyes. Well, it's specifically a requirement for your rods to function properly. So individuals with deficiencies in vitamin A might have trouble seeing at night. Then we look at the cones. The cones are photoreceptors that respond more to color. They're also much better during bright light and they give us our visual acuity. Visual acuity is sharpness of vision. In fact, if you think about your best vision, it is your central vision. And that is largely because we have a high concentration of cones at our macula. So let's look at the retina as if we were looking into someone's eye. This is if we were to shine a light in someone's eye and looking, and we see the back of the eyeball, in essence the retina. We see centrally located a region known as the macula lutea. And within the macula lutea, there's a small area known as the fovea centralis, also referred to as the central fovea. This area of your retina is in charge of your central vision. Your central vision has the greatest visual acuity. There's two reasons why the central fovea gives us our best visual acuity. One, it has a high concentration of cones, which again, give us our best visual acuity. Number two, that central fovea lacks the other two neuron layers. So if I go back, when light has to travel through these, these neurons, it gets disrupted a little bit. 
if you could move these layers over to the side and allow the light to hit the rods and cones directly, that gives us better vision. So there's a very small area in that macula known as the central fovea where these layers of cells, the ganglion cells and the bipolar cell layers, move over to the side a bit so light can hit those rods and cones perfectly. Therefore, this region of the retina is the best region for visual acuity. This region off to the side, off to the medial side, is known as the optic disc. The optic disc lacks photoreceptors and is often referred to as the blind spot. This is largely due to the fact that the optic nerve has to exit that part of the eye. And where that optic nerve is exiting, there's no room for photoreceptors. Notice this image also shows us blood vessels. This is the one area in the human body that we can directly see blood vessels. So we can actually learn a little bit about the cardiovascular system by looking at the retina. This helps us see that that optic disc, where the optic nerve is exiting the eye, lacks photoreceptors. Notice this is all retina. We have the ganglion cells. How do we know that? We see their axons forming that optic nerve. There's going to be a bipolar cell layer and then the rods and cones. The rods and cones are right here. Notice there are no rods and cones at that area of the optic disc. So any light rays that enter the eye and hit this area, we cannot detect. Luckily, we have two eyes and whatever image hits the blind spot in one eye does not hit the blind spot in the other. We also have a brain. The brain processes the information and quite often will uh, fill in the, any missing visual information so you do not perceive a blind spot. Next video we're going to start to talk about and re review some of the major processes required for proper vision.